And good morning everybody. Here we are again. And this time looking at Revelation 3, the church at Laodicea. Now this is the last in the series of the seven churches. And I wondered if we'd save the best till last. But it's quite obvious from as I read the scriptures that this wasn't the best church. This was probably the worst. Most of the other churches had got something to be said of good about them. But this is one church that had nothing good to be said. <clears throat> In fact, the Lord, who is the judge of all men, the, the amen, the faithful and true witness, <clears throat> he describes them as neither hot nor cold. They were lukewarm. There had once been a church that had been influenced by St Paul. He talked about them in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1 where he speaks of his struggles in prayer for them and later on he speaks about the letter that he'd sent to them and the letter to the Colossians in chapter 4 verse 13 to 16 that they should exchange letters to be read to each of the churches so that they could learn from him and learn from his letters. So Paul had had an input into that church and it was once presumably a vibrant church and yet now it was judged by the Lord as being lukewarm, as being neither hot nor cold and he wishes they were either hot or cold and I can understand him wanting them to be hot but I wondered why why cold? And the only example I could find of someone who was cold was probably Saul of Tarsus. When he was persecuting the Christians, when he hated the name of Jesus, when he lived to, to bring trouble upon them, to see them thrown in prison, he was definitely very cold towards the Lord. But at least that was an honest position. And he was, he was very fervent in what he believed. And yet after the Damascus Road encounter with Jesus, when he was converted and he became a Christian himself, all that honesty and fervency was now in God's hands. And he was a mighty warrior for the Lord, taking the name of Jesus all over, founding churches all over Asia, and all over the place. So that's a, 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 a typical example of someone who, at least when they're cold, there's opportunity for a new life and a new start. And, I, and I, I've, Elaine's been reading a book lately, and the, you can see this chap online. You can you can read you can listen to his testimony. His name's Daryl Tunningley, and the book's called Unreachable. Now, if you go on YouTube and type in his name, Daryl Tunningley, and Unreachable, uh, he's sharing his testimony with Nicky Gumbel. And this is what his, the book on the front cover says, One man's journey through drugs, violence, armed robbery, and a miraculous encounter with God in prison. He was a definitely a very cold drug dealer of a man, <clears throat> but he had a, an encounter with Jesus and it changed his life. So from cold, it's turned into someone who's hot. But then I thought, what would it, who would be a, considered as a, a lukewarm person? from the Bible and the only one I could really think of was somebody like Judas Iscariot as he uh, was numbered as one of the disciples <clears throat> and walked with them and ate with them and listened to Jesus' teaching and yet all the time as the keeper of the money bag he, he was on the take, he was just thinking of the money he was living the life looking the looking the part joining in presumably with the songs and and all that but really his heart was not in it he, he'd not got faith he'd not got true faith he was simply in it for the money and as soon as opportunity came for the lord to be uh, handed over 
to the Pharisees. He took the money and he was nothing but a traitor. That's all he would ever be. Even after years of listening to Jesus speaking and teaching, even after years of seeing miracles, of seeing Jesus in action, of being fed at the feeding of the 5,000, after all that, he didn't have an ounce of faith. All he was in it for was the money. <clears throat> and that's the only person I can think of who we would consider uh, as a lukewarm person. And a lukewarm person, Jesus said, the lukewarm church, he would spit it out of his mouth. The word spit it out of the spit is being a detuned word. That's not the word in scripture is actually spew. In, and in uh, Jeremiah 25 and verse 27, the same word is tr translated like this. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, drink, get drunk and vomit and fall to rise no more. The word translated vomit there is that same word that says uh, that we call spit out of his mouth. But uh, they've tuned it down a little bit to make it more acceptable to us. But now this is a church that was full of lukewarm Christians. People who had the appearance of Christians, but they were wealthy, well-off, comfortable. They'd got a nice church building with nice carpets and comfy seats. They, they liked the uh, attention that they got, that they were respected and well thought of. But really, when it came to faith, true Holy Spirit faith, they were very much lacking in that department. So how did this congregation get into that state? Why were they so degraded and so lukewarm? And I think the, the, the clue comes in the next verse after that where Jesus says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And then he says this, You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth. And do not need a thing. They'd got comfortable with the money, with the wealth. Laodicea was a very wealthy area, wealthy place. They'd got plenty of money. They were comfy. And they liked where they were. And they'd become effectively as if they were worshipping uh, money. As if they didn't need God. They just needed things. And it reminded me of one or two verses out of Scripture, particularly in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, where Jesus, speaking to the devil, reminds him of a verse that's in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3, where Jesus says, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's not just about having the things to live, the, the essential needs. It's about looking after the soul, not just the body. Looking after your soul, food for the soul, the word of God. And these Laodiceans had forgot that. Also, I remembered a verse in Matthew 6 and verse 24, again, where Jesus says this, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I'm afraid where these particular uh, Laodicean Christians were concerned, they thought they could mix it. But the Lord was definitely taking second place. They were more keen on the money. And they were in danger. They were lacking in the faith department and they were in danger. This is what Jesus says in Mark chapter 8, 36 and 37. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for the soul? They were that busy looking for the wealth, the respectability, 
for the, the things of this world. They'd lost sight of feeding their soul. They were no longer putting treasure in heaven. Their treasure was on earth. So Jesus has to counsel them. You've become a cosy club. You, when, from where I'm sitting, you say that you've, you've got all this wealth, but you don't realise you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. And he counsels them to get back to where they should be, looking for the things of God and, and not paying so much attention to the things of the world. He counsels them to get true riches, but he also counsels them to get white cloth to wear. These are the garments of salvation. They're referred to in Revelation quite a few times, but they're also re referred to as a wedding garment. In Matthew chapter 22, and verses 1 to, 4, 1 to 14, I'm not going to read it all, but this is where... Uh, there are people that, that turn up at a wedding and it, they've not got the garment over the top of the, the ordinary going out clothes to make them respectable and part of the wedding banquet and they end up getting thrown out into outer darkness. You need to read that on Matthew 22, 1 to 14. They were thought they were part of the, the wedding party, but they weren't. So Jesus says this, if anyone, if behold, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. I've been and found this out of the loft. You've probably seen that one before. Where Jesus, or someone's idea of Jesus knocking at the door but what the Lord's saying is he's making the first move he's giving them opportunity to repent he's standing knocking at the door and they need to open it and let him in they need to let him into their heart and I, I, there might be people watching here today perhaps you're going along in church you attend church regularly but maybe you've never let Jesus into your heart it's a respectable thing to do, to be seen going to church and be thought of as a, a pious sort. But have you got true Holy Spirit faith? Are you born again? Do you know the Lord for yourself? Is He truly Lord in your life? So we need to take that on board. Are you wearing one of these garments of salvation? To close... To close, I want to just read you a verse from uh, a couple of verses from Revelation chapter 7, and this is verses 9 and 13 and 14. This is John's vision. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Start standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Verse 13 to 14. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Are you wearing a robe that's washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you wearing a wedding garment? Or are you lukewarm? All of the churches that we've, we've read about over the past weeks, we've heard about, they bring certain aspects of Christianity that we need to look at. Perhaps this morning being lukewarm is something that we all need to take into account and look at. May God bless you. I'll have a drink now in my tea because I'm croaking.
Oh, gone cold, lukewarm, microwave. <laughs>